Okay, welcome back to the number one Inspire podcast. Uh, today, uh, our guest is James Sanders. Uh, he's worked in recruitment for uh, over 20 years, starting with Hill McGlynn, and um, then went on to start up PSR Solutions in 2005. Since 2005, James has steered his business to a um, from from obviously a startup to a 50 million pound turnover business with five offices and 90 staff and a leading construction recruitment business. James lives in Penkridge with his wife and two children and uh, during today we hope to dive into how James actually achieved this. So James, welcome. Thank you David. Been in recruitment 20 years. Yeah. You must have seen some changes. Yeah, yeah, lots of changes. Um, great upbringing, worked for a big national, learned a lot. Um, took many of those um, attributes um, into PSR as what it is now. Okay, and um, I guess rolling back the, uh, the the clock then to your time at Hill McGlynn and then making that that decision to, to, to go out alone. Yeah. What were the what were the sort of factors going through your head at that time to, to make that decision? Um, uh, I think probably one first one was probably timing. Um, like you said, um, Hill McGlynn was my first major job, um, so I did five years there. So, you know, I wouldn't have done it after year one or anything like that. I felt like I'd got my apprenticeship, so to speak, um, at Hill McGlynn. Um, so I think it was the right time. Um, I had probably the right experience um, and level. Um, and I think I had that burning desire to actually run my own business. You know, my, my father had run his own business, my brother had run his own business. So I think there was a bit of self-belief there that actually I wanted to do it and I could do it. Okay, um, and making that decision then, so you, you, you've gone out, you've made the decision to, to, to create PSR Solutions. Did you, did you have like a formal business plan as such when you, um, when you went out or was it just I'm going to do it and I sort of know how to do it or was there a written plan? I think uh, I'm smiling because uh, I think that's part of the excitement about um, <clears throat> excuse me about starting your own business. Mm. Actually, um, it's actually fun writing your first business plan. Um, you know, I remember I, I do remember it, and I've still got it on my system. So um, you know, the, the, the short term goals from from um, getting a, a, an internet connection to actually yeah. a client base to a candidate strategy. I think that's part of part of the excitement about running your own business. Yeah. Okay. So the the um, the business plan that you put in place was it a was it a, sh- a short, medium, long plan in there, or was it a very much six months to a year? How did that look? I think it, it was probably a year. If I look back now, it's probably a year business plan. It yeah. was it was um, going from a big national to actually trying to establish myself, um, and and that first twelve months, as they talk about in business, is absolutely critical. So I didn't really want to look too far than 12 months. I thought if I can achieve X, Y, Z in a 12 month period, I'd be happier. Yeah. Okay, and um, were there any sort of key challenges during those those first 12 months that you that you came up against? With, or was it just success from, from the off? Or was it a, a challenging time? Um, Lots of key challenges. Um, you know, I worked in a big environment of thirty plus people to to kind of almost work in um, with, with uh, one or two people. Um, that was a challenge in itself. Um, um, but the the small wins became um, major wins. You know, yeah. because of the um, the impact it had on the business mm. um, and the momentum just gained from month to month to month to really so all of a sudden what was um, you know uh, a plan for month three became even bigger for plan for months nine and ten and twelve really okay and um, just for I guess the, the listeners that may be look may be thinking about going out and alone one common challenge that I think people come up against is certainly within recruitment is the ability to fund the the freelance 
head count. Can you just give us a bit of an insight on how you went about the perm and freelance mix and then how you went into to freelance and how that was funded? Yeah, um, well, from a permanent side, and that's how we started our business, there's, there's very little overheads. It was, you know, um, you, you, back then the outgoings was a phone line and a, the running cost of a laptop effectively and, and driving around to meet clients and candidates. So minimum overheads. Getting in the into the world of um, freelance or contracting staff, that's when the outlays uh, happen. So we'd had a trading history of, of circa 18 months and we needed that to get some money in the bank and get some capital behind us so that we could approach finance houses as we did. Um, and then we went down the full factoring route initially. Okay. Okay, so if you were, um, or I guess giving advice out now, you would say, you know, it, it's got to be that, that that perm recruitment to get some money in in the bank to then almost fund that that move into freelance. Well, I guess there's no right or wrong way. That's what we did, and I think it's worked for us. I don't know too many that have gone straight into a freelance market. I think there are out there. I think the, the, the landscape's changed a little bit and there's other offerings out there. But yeah. it, it worked for us. We, we got an established base, some credibility into a per market, some relationships, some some you know preferred uh, contacts and clients. And um, um, it was an extension of our business. Okay, interesting. So um, just thinking back then to um, from, from a hiring strategy. Yeah. So you, you, you've gone it. You, you've gone off. You've um, you've started PSR Solutions. Did you have key individuals that you that you went after, uh, or did you? In, in terms of that business plan, did it involve a hiring strategy within it? Uh, I didn't have a hiring strategy, um, not, not for uh, a good few years. Um, my first point of call was, who do I know, who do I trust, um, who can add value, um, who is going to work um, with me on my wavelength, mm. um, and, and, and that's the first people that joined the business, um, and um, majority are still here now, to be fair, so uh, it's worked. and. They, they, I needed them to buy into what I wanted to achieve mm. um, and um, is it in line with what they want to achieve in their career and life aspirations um, and then we can all be part of the journey together. Okay, and um, in terms of the um, the hiring strategy, then I guess it was people that were trusted, known to you, known to, um, yeah. known to the business then. Moving forward, has that strategy now had to change as you've grown as a business and has the makeup of staff changed and evolved over the years? Uh, yeah, very much so. Um, um, uh, it has. Um, still a lot of principles in terms of um, recommendations um, that people have been successful in their business and their network um, of, of people on that wavelength that they are, that I am. Um, we've seen um, some great successes where, where that's actually worked in our favour. Um, culture plays a big part in our recruitment process. So if, they, if we think they fit the, the, the culture, they've got the same values as us, actually that's, that's mm. part of our recruitment strategy to hire and stuff. Okay, so just touching on those those values or attributes of, if you were to draw up um, the top three to five attributes of somebody that you could almost put your hat on and say they're going to work within our business, what what would they be? Um, probably one is probably their attitude, um, okay. and they can give me various examples of, of where they put that into practice. Um, their application, you know, have they got that desire? Um, you know, we can supply strategy, but at the end of the day, they need to work hard. Yeah. And, and you know, what experiences um, have they got that they can prove and demonstrate that they've uh, achieved all three? Then we'll be interested. Mm, okay, and I think that that's always, um, I guess, with with knowing recruitment businesses, it seems to be an industry that people. You almost wouldn't go to university and say, I'm going to go into recruitment. People seem to go into it from a monetary point of view 
uh, yeah. they see that what what can be achieved um, and it really is that 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 determination desire that hunger to yeah. to achieve a lifestyle that you want for yourself and it's yeah. and it, it's funded through your work yeah. so um, certainly from knowing the industry that is something that, that I've seen um, just um, I know you talked about culture then and I would like to talk about that in, in detail shortly but if we just look to um, before we come up to, to, to where we are today if we look at the press at the minute we, we, we were on the verge of a recession yeah um, 2009 the last major recession in this country PSR obviously four four years in at that point yeah looking back yeah. at the financial history of the business it, it grew during that period yeah so uh, I guess one how did you achieve that yeah. uh, and then the set and, and then the follow-up to that is um, is any tips to for, for businesses at the minute that may be thinking actually we've got a storm ahead yeah um, well, yeah, that that was two thousand and nine. That was all new to new to us, new mm. to me as a business. Um, I don't think we had a special formula per se. Um, I think we just worked harder. We worked smarter. We communicated um, round uh, round the office. Uh, you know, every every minute of the day in terms of opportunity. Um, we got closer to candidates. We got closer to clients and almost um, created a partnership without knowing we created a partnership. We were, I think our clients were reliant on us and we were reliant on them. Um, and I think the reputation that we started to build of the four years pro previous to that actually really helped us. Okay. Uh, and, and where, just quickly on this, where, where do you, where, where do you think this is going to go in terms of the next month, two months, where it's obviously been well documented that October could bring, obviously, Brexit and potential recession. What are your views on that? The Brexit word, the V word, you know, um, it changes on a daily basis, doesn't it? Even even yesterday, you're at a, a deal uh, could be done. Um, I think there's so many external factors. I think you just have to actually look at the, the, the goal, the vision, the plan and stick to it. I think we have to be nimble enough to move with the times if anything drastically does happen. But I think we've got a plan, we've got a process. All our staff know how important their role and the, you know, the role that can play within the business to achieve the successes. So if we can support every individual, then we're confident we've got the experience and the base and the brand to actually ride this out and uh, hopefully be in a position that when things start to pick up, it settles down a little bit, we're in a great position to move, move forward. Good, okay. Um, and I guess just finishing off the uh, the history of PSR mm -hmm. um, and some some advice for people. What would be the um, almost your top three tips for anybody starting a business in any industry? If you could give them three bits of advice, um, what would what would they be? Top tips for, for starting a business. Mm. Um, I think know your sector, know your market, do your market research. Um, I think you, um, uh, coming back to, to me, I think the timing's got to be right as well then. Um, so know your area, um, pick the right time and opportunity, and then you've got to give it everything. Mm. Um, all external factors out the window, and you've got to give it 110% and keep focused, keep believing, and you'll achieve it. Good, good, okay. Um, so, we're up to pres present day then, in terms yep. of PSR. Um, could you just give us a, a quick summary of, of where you are today, and maybe just a, a quick plotted history of how that, those numbers have ramped over, over the years? Uh, yeah, well, we're um, just over 14 years now um, in business. Um, the first business plan was 12 months. We, we then, um, we probably bumbled along the road a bit for, for the next kind of four, four, four years after that, growing every year to start being a bit more of a serious business when we had, let's say, 20 people in the business and um, 
if I wasn't sure where I was going, I, you know, bet your bottom dollar they weren't sure where they were going. So we started getting a little bit more serious and then we had to start to document information and start to um, create a, a journey. Um, that, that, that journey is, has seen us um, open offices every year or every other year since 2012 um, to the point you, you started earlier about we're now five offices. We've got a, a, a longer term business plan that we're year four of, of a 10 year business plan in at the minute. Um, do we want to be in every major city? Yes. Do we want to be close to the action? Yes. Will that give us exposure to the marketplace be, being um, on the ground? Yeah, I believe that's the right formula for us as a business. Um, uh, we've been working over the last 12 months um, seeing the success of uh, opening up in the northeast. Do, uh, can we get into the northwest? Yes, we can. Have we got the right team? We're formulating it at the minute. I see it's being in Manchester in the next six months um, uh, and ready to really make some inroads um, in the northwest of our business. Can that then create into other major cities in the UK and overseas? Yeah, absolutely, it can. Okay, and um, you, you touched on um, overseas there, obviously, uh, that, that PSR international brand. Can you just give us a little bit of a feel for, for how that works from, um, with PSR? Yeah, well, um, you know, um, fundamentally, um, the, the, the experience and the staff that we've got um, have, have created opportunity in an international marketplace. Um, you know, we've, we've placed people in Australasia, um, the Far East, the Middle East, Europe and America. Um, it's kind of um, very much an international business. Yeah. Um, will we get to the point where we have to, um, you know, go into a certain um, continent or city or country? Possibly. Mm. Um, do I know what it, that will be now? No, I don't. Um, is there opportunity? Yes, there is. Um, it, it's one that's actually working at the moment. Our international marketplace has only been going for, for maybe two years at the moment. There's three of them now. You know, can we run a, a successful operation from the UK? It's proven that the others that do it in our marketplace. Mm. Do we want to be on the on the ground at some point? Yes, we do. Um, is it part of our growth strategy? Yes, it is. Mm. Um, do we need to be there tomorrow? No, we don't. So I think it's you know comes back to the people, right time, right place, um, and right economy. Okay. Um, so you mentioned a couple of times um, about culture, yeah, um, and about. Um, you know, it's important to you and, and potentially see it as a as an asset to you, to your business. Do you give us a feel for um, the the type of culture that you've created, and did you have a culture in mind, or did it create itself? Uh, I think it kind of created itself, um, and I'd like to say I, I, I played a part in that. Um, I don't think it can be defined to specific words. I think um, it, it, you know it starts with everything from um, you know from the front door, the environment that you actually create for, for people to come and work. Um, you know the the the, um, uh, the team ethos, the, the the pride, the respect, um, the collaboration. If if I'm doing that and other managers and other staff members are doing that. That's what creates a culture. Mm. Um, have we changed from traditional recruitment um, ways of working? Yes, we have. Has that worked? Yes, we think it has. You know, our staff retention um, is, 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 is fantastic. It's one of the uh, hallmarks in our business. So um, that probably speaks volumes that people, you mentioned earlier about coming into recruitment, they did see it as a, actually a chance to earn good money. We'd like to think that we um, have got a business that's quite established, actually creates opportunity. They can actually come in and actually see a career, see a, um, a, a business that they want to be part of um, that helps their, their, their lives and, and, and aspires them to um, be a better person uh, mm. themselves. Okay, and I think with um, you, you talked then about in, improving 
their lives obviously you're influencing and impacting a lot of people's lives on a daily basis within uh, the role that recruitment plays um, do you, do you, is that something that you talk about with staff and, and make them aware of uh, the impact they are having uh, on their on the lives of people that they place into permanent positions and freelance positions. I don't I don't think they fully understand that at all. I think that the a lot of our consultants, our sales consultants, will will see that as their job. I think um, only the more experienced people in our business will see that actually. Um, those clients that you or those candidates that you might have dealt with some 5, 10, 15 years ago all of a sudden become your clients. The impact mm. that that has now back on their desks of, of actually um, um, helping them out, supporting them, staying in contact, doing the right thing back then and over the years has actually paid dividends. So um, I think the importance of the, um, you know, how you operate from day one, um, like I said about being a, a Korean part of the journey, will we'll, we'll, we'll actually prove dividends to you um, the longer you stay in it and more involved mm. in it because yeah, um, it's all about relationships and um, that's that's a big factor in our business. Mm. Okay, you, you mentioned now about when people do come in uh, through the door initially, um, do they come in with a, uh, a, a training plan? Is there an um, induction process that they go through here and how do you think that compares to other businesses? Uh, I'm not 100% certain about other businesses, but yeah, in terms of our business, um, you know, uh, I think, you know, just from an industry perspective, uh, I think the first 12 months is key. Mm. Um, we have to get our interview um, assessment criteria correct, and therefore we will only choose the very best people that actually fit the culture and fit the, the right worth ex ethics of our business. Um, the minute they're through the door from, from their first day, yeah, it, it's, it's very detailed, very planned. The onboarding process involves multiple offices. Um, they've got a 12 month um, journey on day one, and I think there's about a 24 point um, um, tick box to actually achieve that won't take them five minutes, it'll take them 12 months. There's various stages um, through training, through external training, through mentorings, through shadowing, and, and on the job training as well. So we will give them every support because we know that will prove um, dividends to us as a business in the longer term. And I think that probably um, re relates to uh, your low staff turnover that people do feel as if they're supported. I think if you look at the, the stats of why people uh, leave businesses, it's often down to lack of training, um, lack of uh, management support and it seems that if you have that in place and they can see it on a 12 month journey, yeah. that it, it's going to give them the best chance to succeed and, and yeah. give them the the tools to succeed yeah um so just to finish off um P psr chat before we look uh, yeah. just have a bit of an in some uh, in individual chat about yourself and, and your personality um the next you mentioned 10 year vision uh, which is um you're four years into now what does the next year what does the next five years look like for psr um I think the, the next that I mentioned, um, we want to be um, in the northwest um, within the next six months. Okay. Uh, I, I'll probably see that happening. Um, we want to put support and time and effort into that as we have our previous um, two, three offices. So it will be a question of um, um, making sure they've got the right systems, right processes, right procedures, and, and, and from a staffing and um, support point of view, that will be our focus. Um, we're constantly looking at ways where we can improve nationally as a business, um, whether that through our, you know, our candidate generation, through to our client relationships, um, and, and also taking that uh, a step further when, when I started out thinking why we have been successful and trying to create um, you know an added value constantly to, to both the client and candidate experience mm. so we'll, we'll always look at ways where we can improve um, and analyze what we've done already um, and hopefully set us up for the future so um, to kind of answer your question um, more continued growth mm. you know, one of our um, 
you know, obviously positives is that we've grown every year as a business. Um, you know, we, we can see growth um, in the future of our business. Um, we, we know we can get growth within the construction um, sector um, nationally and internationally. Um, we've got a plan that's worked, so it's almost like why change what mm. we're doing. We've seen successes from it. Okay, sounds uh, as if there's some exciting times ahead uh, to be involved at PSR Solutions. And just moving on to, to, to you now, and um, uh, part of the podcast, we're very interested in, in learning from um, inspirational leaders. Um, so in terms of your, um, do you have any, any daily routines that you, that, that you go through that, um, that, you, that you could tell us about? No, not really. No, okay. um, um, I, I, one thing that I'm very conscious of is, um, you know, uh, everyone's got busy lives, whether that's family, relationships, everything that is. Um, um, I think the, the minute you walk in through that, um, that office door, everything like that, um, it's got to be, um, you know, the, the, the kind of air of uh, actually um, you're here, you want to be a part of it. Um, and, and I genuinely do. And I think it's important that that rubs off on other people. Um, and I see the, the environment that we've got here. Um, people smiling, people enjoying being here, and I think it's it's key that yeah you know for me that's probably um, a, a ritual to to you know um, do the pleasantries mm. um, which I which you know which I do others do every day and it just sets the tone for the day in the office uh, effectively. Okay, good. Um, and in terms of your insp- inspiration so, or, or a mentor, somebody that you look up to, you look to, um, have you got um, somebody that inspires you and, 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 and who is that and why? Uh, well, I guess my, my initial, um, um, initially I would say my, my father, who, who, who I mentioned, who, who started his own business, he was probably the inspiration for, for me to start my own business. Um, as I've gone over the years, have I taken little snippets from various people along the way? Um, you know, the, the founders of Hill McGlynn were very inspirational in terms of the setup of a, of a recruitment business. Um, that was big for me. Um, through to the drivers that kind of change over the years. Um, now I probably look at um, my, my, my children and I think um, they inspire me to help me achieve my goals, which is probably to help provide for them and give them the best experiences in life as possible to help their their, their life journey, which yeah. is uh, it's a challenging one, but um, one that's thoroughly uh, enjoyable. Okay, and um, you mentioned that you'd like to take snippets of, um, of people as you go to try and bring them in and take the best of them. Um, is there any uh, anyone in particular from like a, a well-known um, business leader that you've that you've taken some of the traits or methods that they use and uh, embed them in your own uh, workings or within your business? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, probably probably this point, I'd probably highlight um, a former employee, Steve, uh, Stephen Ware, who um, obviously founder um, of, of Hill McGlynn, um, so kept in touch with him um, and joined our business, um, out of our um, London operation. You know, his worth ethic was was second to none, um, and I think he inspired me and, and inspired others um, to, to create that same level of attention to detail, um, and, and again, that, that inner drive and ability, um, and, and when you when you achieve um, success, um, you need to celebrate success. And mm. I think he was very big on, on both those factors. And I think that's been um, brilliant for me and a brilliant for the business. Yeah. Okay. And um, in terms of uh, I don't know, in, in terms of educational books uh, or, or any books that have played a part in in your life that you may have read that you could recommend to listeners that. Um, what would be if you were to gift a book to somebody? Which which book would you gift? Um, probably um, I don't know. Probably of late, um, uh, uh, you know, probably Tony Robbins um, "Unleash the Power" because it's not. Uh, it's part 
part business, but it's part actual emotional journey. It what it's what gets you up um, every day. Um, can you improve yourself on a daily basis? Um, can you um, can you inspire others? Um, and I think that's probably uh, you know for me at the moment that's probably a good place for where I'm at at the moment and where I want to be in the future. Okay, and have you actually seen Tony in action at any time? I've been to Unleash the Power in London uh, okay. and I'm looking at another masterclass um, of his, which is probably an overseas one, I think the next one. So yeah, I think it's very inspirational now um, and, and certainly um, helped me, help my family, help the business and I think it's, um, I think they're fantastic, yeah. Okay, well uh, James, thanks for your, uh, for, your, for your time today. It's been um, insightful to understand from a, a startup business through to uh, 50 million pounds and growing. Uh, it's great to have an insight into uh, the nuances of that. Uh, it is an inspirational business, uh, an inspirational culture, and hopefully it will inspire uh, other people to uh, achieve great things, which is what this podcast is all about. So um, hopefully you enjoyed it. And um, James, thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers, David. Thank you.